Welcome to the Honest Designers Show, your transparent look into life as a modern designer. My name's Tom Ross and I'm the founder at designcuts.com and this week I'm joined by fellow Brit and expert hand letterer Ian Barnard, American retro design expert Dustin Lee and the ever-talented South African illustrator Lisa Glanz. In this week's episode, we're joined by the very talented Joanna Fallon, a multidiscipline designer working from the Cotswolds in the UK. If you follow Design Cuts, you may recognise Jo from her weekly vlogs, where she's been documenting the ups and downs of growing her creative business. This week, we pick Jo's brain and dig into the realities of what it really takes to get a design business off the ground. This is a good one, folks. So tune in and let's get into the show. So this week, we are thrilled to be joined by the very talented Joe Fallon, who is an experienced graphic designer, chalk artist, hand letterer, you name it, uh, who is running a successful up and coming creative business. Uh, you may have seen Joe from her vlog, which she runs via Design Cuts, uh, and we post all over the place, as well as us just generally sharing her amazing work. If not, we give you lots of chances to check that out. But Joe, welcome to the show. We're really happy to have you here. Thank you for having me. Hi, Joe. Joe. So Ian, I know you've already met Joe. Um, yep. We talked about this last week with meeting face to face. You guys met at was that a conference? It was Birmingham. It was before before your uh, big talk at Glug. Kind of sort of led you on a bit of a wild ch- goose chase around Brum, but uh, <laughs> made it in the end. <laughs> yeah, no, no. It was yeah. It was um, I was there early in Birmingham for a. It was a creative evening of talks about six talks and yeah sort of mid-afternoon met up with joe uh just chatted to you she was doing her vlog so asked me a few questions so yeah it was really good to uh get to meet her sweet and did she kind of calm you down or like amp you up before your speech <laughs> <Your> speaking <laughs> coaching going on she make you doubt everything that you ever did like <laughs> yeah she was very reassuring but then when i got to the talk she started throwing tomatoes at me <laughs> <laughs> in the background <laughs> heard this all you? Before. Yeah. <laughs> rubbish get off <laughs> cool so joe um for all the listeners who haven't seen your stuff it would be great just to get a kind of brief bit of background on what you're currently working on and really a journey for how you got there okay well um i thought of I started kind of connecting with design cuts, I think when you guys just started, because I actually, I was doing some tutorials for you mm-hmm. and um, sort of, we've kind of sort of stayed in touch since then. And I've been kind of continuing doing work as a freelance graphic designer, but more recently I kind of wanted to think about where I wanted to sort of develop my career and how I could be doing more of what I really wanted to be doing. And something that had quite recently become part of my graphic design work was doing chalkboards and sort of hand lettering at various venues like sort of pubs and bars and thought actually this is kind of the, the element of my work that I really enjoy so maybe I could try sort of specializing in this a little bit more and that kind of gave a good opportunity to start documenting that and maybe it would be something that was useful for you know the design cuts community to actually see someone essentially starting up a creative business and what the blog's been doing it's been going for about 12 weeks now yeah it's been it's been good consistency <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> every it's, week uh, showing up. <laughs> and um what i've been doing is recording what i've been doing kind of gaining new clients and sort of showing the actual work that i'm producing as well and i'm about to start doing some work for design cuts going to launch a digital chalkboard product which will be really cool and that's something that's quite new and Sounds good. Yeah, it'll be it'll be really fun actually because um, mm. I've, like I said, everything I've been doing has been sort of quite hand drawn and manual so far. So actually producing something digital and allowing other people to sort of have a play with it and use it were really really cool. Sounds amazing. Well, you you've been getting increasingly busy, which is something I love, and we always get asked by people they kind of want insight into what it's actually like behind the scenes, either as a successful designer or up and coming designer or getting a business off the ground. And that's what I love about the vlog, which for everyone listening is called The Creative Journey. 
And if you go to uh, Design Cuts on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Design Cuts, or go to the Design Cuts website learn section, you'll find it in there. And it's like, it's just very honest. I think it fits with what a lot of the stuff we talk about on this show, where it's not giving you a glossy image of what it's like. You know, you've, you've had episodes, in fact, quite a lot of episodes now. <laughs> <laughs> that there is a there is a running theme of sort of me just saying yeah I'm, I'm it's about one in the morning I'm quite tired yeah. I'm gonna have <laughs> coffee again <laughs> kind of... so I actually really like that because I noticed Tom does that too like Tom you'll do your Instagram vlog and you'll be like I was exhausted I wasn't going to do this but I'm doing it and I love exactly. it exactly it's it's just better I think and I kind of want to I definitely want to dig into your stuff joe but i kind of want to frame it with a wider awareness of just the reality of what you're doing because i think a lot of people present the glossy version oh i got this big new client uh, and it's all going like a rocket and it's a huge success overnight or people look at the successful people who are you know the absolute big names in the industry and it's like they imagine they made it instantly and it's really not true. So I love getting that insight into, oh, this meeting actually didn't go well, or I, I missed this deadline, or I'm up all night, but yeah. here's a win this yeah, week. And, and, and just yeah. the steady progress as well. And what I've noticed in your vlog is you're getting increasingly busy. And when I talk to yeah. you on email and stuff, which is amazing. It's really nice, but it's, it's kind of um, because I've always, as a freelance designer, I've kind of managed to sort of stay ticking along, but there's never been a point where I've actually been like, actually, it's quite... I need to start really properly managing my time now. It's getting quite busy. So now it's kind of got to that stage. It's kind of really exciting. But at the same time, it's like, oh, right, I've actually got to really, you know, really get my act together and kind of sort of, you know, do the scheduling. I've got like, I don't know if you can see on the video, but there's like a a yearly planner there, which is literally (laughs) empty apart from my holiday. (laughs) So I should probably start using that a little bit. But um, it's... It looks good. It looks the part. It, 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 it looks professional, like on Skype calls and stuff. But it's like... what, what, what is that, by the way? Are, are the yellow, because she has a calendar behind her and it, it, it was all white originally, but there's yellow blocks everywhere now. What are the yellow the, blocks? The, the, the yellow blocks are weekends. So they're kind of, it's just. I thought that was like client calls and stuff. I was like, dang. Yeah, no, that's sadly, yeah, they're the weekends. <laughs> See, Dustin's got a similar thing on his schedule where the big blocks of yellow are just nap times. And that's how <laughs> kind of. I've got all my coffee seven. break scheduled in. I'm really, I'm on the case there. <laughs> it would just be full, completely full. Um, okay, so we, we're circle back to what you're doing now with the business. I'd love to know a bit of history about how you got into it. I mean, did you get into this kind of thing right out of school? Like, have you always done it or? It was, um, well, I was sort of thinking about it a little bit before the call because I've always wanted to make sure I had something to talk about. But um, it's, for me, my progression as a graphic designer has all been very almost accidental so I did I've always had an interest in art and drawing and kind of visual a visual sector and I knew that that's always something I want uh, as a rough guy that's kind of what I wanted to pursue as a career I specialized in graphic design and illustration at university and then I graduated with a degree graphic design but illustration was my specialization and after I graduated I did what quite a lot of art students do and I just got a job in retail for several years and kind of just on the side tried to do little bits of design work and I kind of sell sold greeting card designs kind of at little local shops there was nothing particularly spectacular or glamorous and still to this day I've never worked at a design agency or anything like that it's always been freelance Mm. and cool after I got made redundant from one retail job I started working at a cafe sort of a small locally owned cafe and they found out I did graphic design so I kind of started doing a little bit of signage for them and then they're like oh can you maybe do as a website and so I kind of learned how to use iWeb <laughs> and stuff and kind of that's how I sort of learned a little bit of sort of coding and HTML and CSS and started doing some web design stuff and um, they, they were basically responsible for starting my career as a graphic designer because I just sort of did like a logo for them I would do their packaging design and their promo stuff and people were really noticing it and sort of complimenting it on it and it was through them that I met one of my main clients who still gives me the majority of my work today with her businesses that she runs locally. So is that the wow. business with the incredibly cool name? Asparagasm, yes. <laughs> <laughs> a, a, a vegan restaurant nearby. It's like, <laughs> everyone has a Love lot of that. fun with it when they first hear it. So but that, that's a that's a great one to work with because like I said, potentially there is so much fun to potentially have. But um my my entire career has been very much a series of opportunities and accidents and it has just been very 
organic none of it was really kind of pre-planned it just happened and I kind of nice. eventually reached to say I was really happy with the position that I was in but I wanted to have more control and direction and sort of a bit more purpose in terms of where I was going and how I wanted to grow and I thought well I was struggling to sort of just sell myself so Joanna Fallon graphic designer I kind of found it really hard to talk about myself and what I did so one day I just thought oh Cotswold chalkboard it's kind of alliteration it's kind of quite fun to market and I kind of went with that and it's been much much easier for me to actually sort of promote myself and sell what I do because I have now a very specific area that I work in and it gains people's interest and from there I can upsell other services so the last client that I was working on the upper lot cafe that's sort of been on the vlog for a few weeks I've been doing a lot of their chalkboard signage but when I met with them they were like we could also do with a logo can you help with that I'm like well yes I can and um yeah got that in the locker yeah it's sort of it's just a nice way to kind of get a sort of unique in and then from there you can kind of tell the people what else that you do and that's kind of what's on my website as well it kind of starts with the Cotswold chalkboards I do chalkboards but you know I can help with your flyers promo materials logos and if you work with me for all of these it helps keep a consistent brand and look so i'm just going to mention that it's it's pretty brilliant by specializing in the chalk board work people invite you into their establishment and they see you in person you're there for a while hanging out so by the end of that you can feel really comfortable hiring someone to do more because you've hung out yeah. with them for a decent amount of time Mm. Do you find no, you that they met me? That they want to they want to work with after they met me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's 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 really nice. So I'm kind of it's with with things like kind of emails and phone calls. You kind of do lose that connection. And I don't know about anyone else, but I always find emails and phone calls a little bit awkward. I much much yeah. prefer to meet people sort of face to face, and you know it's a lot more natural. It's more relaxed, and you you know especially with the chalkboard stuff because it is all very much premises based you get a much better idea of you know the person's space and it gives a really a nice opportunity for you to kind of ask more about you know their work and their business and mm. it's nice because it means that you don't have to do too much of the talking and it also you know you're showing an, like an interest in them and people like to talk about themselves and their business and their work and I think that's quite a nice way to approach it and actually you know really connect with a client and I found that that's allowed me to have a lot more creative freedom because they kind of sense they they know me they can trust me and they feel able to kind of talk to me about any concerns that they have which whereas with emails even after I've met the client there's still kind of a slight sheen of professionalism mm. whereas um which is obviously a good thing you don't want to kind of be overly familiar but yeah when you course. when you meet people face to face it's it's just a kind of more real and natural way of working and you can really connect and find out what what they want and express concerns in um in a much friendlier way you know what i love is you've pretty much as i followed your business growing you've echoed so much of what we've talked about on mm. this show and this show has actually made me hyper aware of a lot of aspects of running a creative business because obviously it's what we discuss every week but for example i think the one that just went out was talking about meeting clients face to face instead of email and yeah. the benefits of that and so clearly that's working for you and just generally kind of digging in and practicing and getting better and better and having to learn marketing and time management and the ups and downs emotionally of it all like following your journey and then every week kind of talking about similar issues it just made me so attuned to as I say the reality of what it takes to do this and I think what I'm noticing is there is an awful lot of people where they they kind of do a crappy design once and suddenly they call themselves an established designer and that is what we never advocate we're always kind of about putting in the work and, and building it up over time and it's just been it's been re really kind of inspiring to see you growing it steadily over time and, and there aren't really any shortcuts there you're just putting in the work oh thank you I mean there's still times now like I still feel awkward calling myself a designer sometimes and like if you look at design I sometimes look at design jobs just to kind of see what's around I don't think I would actually be able to qualify for a professional design role like in an agency or anything because I've just because I've done everything kind of on my own on my own terms so um, I'm sure you would I think it's more about talent and yeah. having the right eye to be honest yeah. and I think it would be very attractive to be so self-starting yeah Mm. yeah for sure yeah thank you um so I, like for the rest of um you guys in the call 
shall we maybe fire a few questions at Joe if she doesn't mind? Um, Go on. Just in, like term, you, yeah. in, in terms of like, you know, thinking about the listeners, everyone listening at home, what would be most helpful for them in terms of perhaps the earlier stage? Because this is, this is quite a new company. Uh, you know, it's not even a year old. It's in the first kind of few weeks and months. And so what would help the, the people listening at home, do you think, in terms of that and getting something off the ground and growing it? Well, I'm interested to know when, when you started focusing and niching down to your chalkboard um, hand lettering work, did that bring you more? Is, are you busier because of that or did it kind of quieten down and then pick up again? You know, what was the, the process of that? It has actually picked up since. And I think okay. that's because I kind of lost that shyness of trying to promote myself because when I was just kind of trying to promote my service as a freelance graphic designer, I kind of wanted to do a bit of everything and I didn't mm. really know how to sell myself whereas I thought and I, I, I knew that was a problem and that, that's kind of part of the reason why the whole chalkboard thing came about so I actually had a specific thing to, to, re, to really promote and what I found is that for, for me I just chose it because that's one of the elements that I enjoyed most about the graphic design work I was doing at the time but people have really kind of picked up and responded on it and they're like oh wow chalkboards they're really cool and I, I didn't even realize that that's something that someone did because you, you see them around everywhere but you just yeah. kind of assume that someone there's got like kind of the art student that works at the cafe to do it and exactly kind of thing and it really because it's quite unusual and unique it really picks up like people's imagination that asks lots of questions and it's also made me more proactive in terms of seeking work and approaching people because actually now not have a much better idea of who i want to approach you yeah. know because mm-hmm. you'll see someone and they've got a chalkboard and you think that doesn't look great i could maybe sort of give them a little nudge say hi you know this is a lovely space you've got here but uh you know that I could do a better job at that maybe I can help yeah <laughs> I think <laughs> in in sort of as polite and diplomatic terms as possible of yeah. course but yeah that does give you so much more direction if you're kind of approaching strangers and saying mm. do you want a bit of design work doing like it, it's far too vague yeah. but it, yeah as you say if they're there and you're in a pub and you see they've got a chalkboard it's like oh I do that by the way here's a look at my work it's it's such a direct in yeah exactly and so the whole the whole niching down um, thing. So so you 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 actually think that that because of that is your business is now growing. And and do you think that because now you've you've done that whole um, you know breaking the ice for yourself about talking about your work, do you think it ha- has helped you with your other stuff as well, or do you still struggle to, to speak about your design work? You know the graphic design work. It actually has had a knock-on effect of helping me talk about my design work more okay. as well. Because, yeah. um, because again, it sort of, it, it does kind of give you that in. So you kind of, yeah. you talk about something very specific and then you say, yeah, I'll do this. And it kind of, and most people do ask, oh, so how did you get into it? And then you kind of say, yeah. oh, well, I did, my background's in graphic design and illustration and you can talk about the other work that you've done and also can potentially offer them. So it it kind of, that's sort of like the first step. And then mm. it like springboarded you to the next level exactly yeah yeah Yeah. cool so I've got a question how do you find the aspect of working very much locally because I think probably a lot of people listening are not doing that and they're they're thinking much broader in terms of oh how do I maybe get clients online or on Instagram or something like that but clearly for you it's working out targeting these local businesses it has and this is all stuff that I never I hadn't really considered before and as a graphic designer you know my what was like right sort of potentially you can work from anywhere I could my my client reach is potentially infinite and that kind of almost makes it worse for you because you don't even know kind of where to start so I thought well if I'm just That's starting true. starting locally I at least know who to approach where to go to and I'm quite fortunate that where I am it's sort of like the Cotswolds in the UK is kind of it's quite a sort of affluent area it's quite boutique so there's a lot of places that have got quite unique characteristics and so the chalkboard aspect works works quite well there but um it's it's made it easier for me to kind of go and approach people because it's like literally within just a five less than a five mile radius so many places like bars and cafes that have potential work for me mm-hmm. and as i as i approach them pe- the people that visit there will see it and hopefully it spreads and that's how i got this uh new client they saw something on uh another cafe's instagram feed that they follow that's local and thought oh they've got new chalkboard that looks quite good i'll 
get in touch. And That's cool. Oh, yeah. amazing. So did they tag you in that post? And they then did, they, yes. Uh, see, like, I love that. And that shows how powerful social can be. But it doesn't always have to be on this mass global level. Mm. It can really, really work. And I don't know if you are doing this yet, Joe, but you can actually... Um, search geographically and location based on instagram so you can see everyone who's posting on instagram within a certain radius oh, and then right. I, I would start hit, hitting those people up oh, i didn't even know that yeah <laughs> i yeah, didn't yeah. know that what's kind of <laughs> interesting about that is that you you know that competitors spy on each other so if one coffee shop sees oh all of a sudden their stuff is looking killer <laughs> in yeah, their cafe yeah, so. and then they tag you <laughs> they've just given that other cafe intelligence about where to find someone <laughs> to do something different if yep. you know but still compete yeah. a little more um i had a i had a more broad question for you there's a there's a saying that the blessing of starting and not and being anonymous when you first start being a designer and you don't have a following is that you can experiment and do things and you don't have a bunch of people witnessing your blunders and stumbles and things like that and then as you grow, everyone's watching as you do things. I'm just, I'm curious, when you try new things, how do you know when, do you share it from the very beginning, from your very first time putting pencil to paper? Or how do you decide when the right time is to start sharing things socially with people? It's a tricky one, because I think I've having to overcome like perfectionist tendencies. And I was like very concerned in terms of what I shared online in terms of my work. And that's kind of, one of the reasons I was the vlog sort of kind of took so long to get started was I didn't want to kind of almost allow people to see me whilst I was sort of just starting out and being a bit like I don't actually know what I'm doing <laughs> it's kind of I'm just it's kind of a quite an, you kind of want to be honest you kind of make yourself relatable but at the same time you do want to appear you know professional and like no one's going to hire someone that doesn't know what they're doing kind of thing but um I think the sooner you start the better because like that is the good thing like if people don't really know what you're doing it's it's okay to start and make mistakes because people it allows you then to connect with maybe a small group of people who will be like your loyal followers for further on down the line and they'll mm. be encouraging and supportive and then by which point more people have heard of you you would have gained all that experience anyway mm -hmm. so have any of your clients seen your vlog uh no because i've not really been promoting it i think purely for that reason like do i really want my clients to see me kind of at one in the morning kind of saying i'm really knackered and it's because i've not managed my time properly or i kind of <laughs> it is i can't it's that kind of trying to be relatable but also no you no do i get that I, I i think yeah let's have a different conversation after the call maybe uh um, yeah because <laughs> you because you know i'm going to push for that because i just think yeah it's, it needs i think they're done i think they care about the results but i think it's such a thing for your brand like obviously we want to help get the word out about what you're building building but i think there's yeah there's a, there's a lot of people out there who are sharing that honest side and i think people actually connect with that even clients they realize you're not a perfect person but you are delivering amazing results for them what I love doing on Instagram, on uh, YouTube is when you find a popular channel is looking, uh, viewing by oldest first and just see where <laughs> they've come from. So, and it, and yeah, you connect. If it's just perfect straight off the boat, you're just like, oh, you know. That's, <laughs> you're just is, though, before starting this, like Tom was like, oh, have you done any vlogs before? Have you, have you watched anything? No, no, I haven't. It's like, I should check out Casey Neistat. It's like, okay, I'll have a look. And he's like, kind of like <laughs> CEO of like a brilliant startup in New York and he's got drones <laughs> he's like running yeah. through New York and like right yeah Joe was like how do I vlog so I sent her the best vlogger in the world I was like I'll just have a look at that and yeah. sort of replicate it won't make you I feel like that's so intimidating it's horrible oh. Try, trying to do a Casey Nice that vlog in a small like <laughs> town <laughs> village like rural Gloucestershire UK yeah it's like, I mean the dude's videos are so good that he can he can just record himself jogging around the city and get like five million views in a day <laughs> oh he is absolutely ripped though so <laughs> i'm sure that's working for him i like to do like it's like a live stream of just me like drinking wine on the sofa or something it's like, oh. <laughs> so isn't there that video of a uh, uh, a potato or a waffle that just falls over and that's got like about i don't know a million views <laughs> I'm only out, I'm the out by a waffle <laughs> that's really interesting <laughs> this guy's just like i can do anything at this point put a little cool music behind it I love that that's your your words of inspiration for Joe. Well, well if <laughs> the potato awful. can be compelling, <laughs> then I'm sure you'll be okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so um, how have you found in terms of 
the learning experience, not just with the vlog, but with everything you're doing with this business. Because every time I talk to you, you know, re more recently, you're getting into time management on a level you never have before. Like what what have been some of the biggest learning curves of doing this business? I think it's kind of really taking accountability for yourself. And um, I think especially like since doing the filming as well, it's kind of really given me the incentive that I can't actually just sit around doing nothing all week because then I'll have, I'll have nothing to film and um, so it has really kind of pushed me to actually examine like myself and my own work ethic and really think about my career in a way that I never had done before like I've sort of reached my kind of early heading towards mid-30s now and you think right I need to I would like a bit more direction I kind of want to have a body of work that I can look back on and be proud of and without wanting to sound sort of too pretentious, sort of like a, a legacy almost. Yeah. And um, it's, I thought, right, I, I want to get good at something. I want to get good at a craft. And that's why sort of the, the sort of the drawing and the lettering came in. And sorry, I've sort of di digressed a little bit, but it's, it has, it's basically kind of forced, forced me to focus more now in terms of where my life is going, what I want to do for work and kind of sort of the trail that you want to leave behind you so for me I've always enjoyed arts and design but I kind of wanted to do a bit more in terms of actually sharing that and having people see my work and hopefully inspiring people as well so whenever mm -hmm. you do get the comments that people actually see it and say you know this is actually giving me that little lift or it's inspired me that's that's amazing because you kind of think mm. that hardly anyone's you, you kind of sort of think well who, who's who's watching this who's going to watch this but it, it yep. does sort of if it just inspires a few people who are maybe like a few steps behind where I am that's that's fantastic and it does give you that extra motivation to do to do better because people are watching and also you want to you want to do it for yourself as well yeah yeah does that sure. answer the question i think I, I kind of lost track a little bit no no it it does and it's something i'd bear in mind and i'm thinking about this a lot lately i think everyone obsesses over engagement and i do think it's hugely important but i would never ignore the silent viewers because you'd be surprised like how many people know what we're all up to but just never really comment or anything like that but they are actually following along with your story that sounds it's a like, little bit scary <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, that's like facebook stalkers i have a lot yeah, of, i have a lot of friends on facebook we know you're there you can't hide <laughs> <laughs> what i mean is you might have a bigger audience than you imagine it's like the other yeah. night i was I was up in London getting dinner and drinks with my best mate and suddenly this guy walked past who I hadn't seen in years who was kind of more of an acquaintance than anything and he was like oh by the way enjoying the Instagram videos and I was like what <laughs> I, 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 I didn't I, I didn't didn't even know that he followed me um, and, and I guarantee you have got like uh, hundreds and hundreds of people who are actually following you build your business and just because they're not commenting um, yeah. or liking every post every week they will actually be following along and supporting you in the background. I don't know if that's scary or motivating. <laughs> like, how, how are you balancing doing the work, finding clients, and then doing the, the marketing or, or, you know, your blogs and that kind of thing? I mean, how do you do you have, I know you're talking about scheduling and all that, but what, what do you prioritize? I mean, is that, is that a super important thing that you do regardless? Or, I mean, well, this is what the problem is because I, I kind of have sort of no routine or set schedule as such a kind of, okay. at the moment, I'm sort of working in a very kind of reactive way in that that reaction is usually panic it's kind of like what what, what, are the, what are the moment is kind of freaking me out in terms of what I need to do and then I'll, then I'll do that which is kind of why I'm trying to work on the scheduling a bit more so that yeah. you can only really sort of feel feel bad about things that you're you can feel only feel okay about things that you're not doing if you know what you're not doing yeah and um, that's kind True. of at the stage I'm trying to get to at the minute okay. and, um, but at, at the moment the priority is actually just focusing on sort of just starting and doing the work because I work if I'm not on location somewhere I'm, I work from home a lot and it's just so easy to kind of just drift into nothingness and then mm. as soon as you kind of start something that kind of gets momentum going and from there you keep you keep going so yeah mm -hmm. at the moment my, my focus is just actually to start on some work that you know you need to be doing and from there it'll start to, you know come together a bit more in terms of right this needs to be done next or I need to schedule this in and that that's what happens so yeah for me, once once I start, I'm okay. It's just the, the starting. It's the starting. Energy, I know. Yeah, yeah. Of course, it's tricky. We all suffer from that, I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was <laughs> listening to the podcast, I think just before this one, the last one that I listened to was about 
productivity and focus. So it, it was like a, a huge relief to kind of hear that you all have the same problems as well in terms of actually kind of, you know, managing time and it's uh, all thinking. a bit of a last minute thing. Yeah. And, um, Always. Always. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we didn't even offer much palpable advice in that one. We just sort of said, oh, sod it, we're <laughs> all like, in the same boat. You just made everyone else feel better, which is always a good thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> just a big group hug. So, Joe, what would you say you struggle with most apart from perhaps uh, focus and, and perhaps juggling it all? Is there anything else that stands out in your mind that's particularly difficult? I think it's sort of almost having the sort of faith, faith and belief in yourself. So for me, it's kind of always in the back of my mind thinking, this isn't good enough. I'm going to get found out, you know, what's that I'm, I'm actually not particularly great at this, which is kind of contradicts to what everyone else says. But um, I think there's always an element that if you're in sort of any kind of creative industry, it's almost like because you're doing something that you enjoy, it's um, you're not meant to be doing it. That's not what work is. Well, like it's too yeah. good to be true kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, it's all it's rubbish. You know, there's no reason why you can't enjoy what you do. But I kind of feel that I have to make it harder for myself. I have to kind of put some kind of... You have to be trusted to make it worthwhile. Yeah, yeah. So kind of, I, I can't just say like, all well, my friends that don't like their work and they're complaining, I can't just say, I just had the best day ever. I've just been drawing all day, listening to music, I just had a chat with some of the dines over a glass of wine. It's great. So I have to like, think, right, I oh, know I didn't sleep till three in the morning. I was kind of, I wasted half my morning like watching kind of YouTube videos or kind of like, do all these emails and stuff. And it's, um, the, I think the, the, the hardest things I've having to learn to accept is actually, I chose to do this and I chose to do this because I enjoy it and I do have some belief that I'm actually quite good at it. So mm-hmm. I kind of owe it to myself, really, that I need to really focus and and grow as a designer. Because every time I have a, a supermarket just over the road for me, so whenever I kind of have a little sort of funk, I think oh, I just need to get out of the way and you know get a change of space. I'll kind of go usually, usually to buy like some biscuits or coffee or something as an excuse. Like I need some creative fuel. But it's um, <laughs> you go there and you sort of see people kind of working as cashiers and things. And like I did used to do that, and you think actually I'm in a really fortunate position here, and I kind of feel that it's it's rude if I don't yeah have some faith in myself and what I'm doing because a lot of people actually don't have that luxury to be able to kind of yeah. you know, follow what they want to do so I think a bit of self self-confidence and learning to accept that is probably one of the hardest parts love that I think a lot of it is a, a mind game it was just thinking yeah. how sometimes I worry about uh what one person who's like slightly better than me thinks of my work than I do of a thousand people that think it looks awesome yeah so yeah it's trying to get into the mindset that there is a lot of people really enjoy your work and what it was like before you started practicing or learning what you were doing how you thought about the work and you all thought it was awesome so once you got to that level you have to think oh people are going to think it's really good so but it's a real struggle because you just like some days you just think oh I'm actually really proud of what I've just created and then some days you're like that is just rubbish <laughs> that is like <laughs> it just swings yeah, yeah your yeah. ego is really up and down right it's kind mm. of part of the job mm. i don't i don't know anyone who's a designer and is just totally arrogant with it they're like i am the actual best in the world at this check me out i'm awesome i i feel yeah. like that could kind of work in the industry they'd probably make a name for themselves as just being so unusual <laughs> Is that the arrogant designer? <laughs> yeah, it's gonna, it's arrogant gonna, designer's it's gonna podcast. A, It'll be that's it's gonna be a a time. like the Kanye West of design. <laughs> it's just like I'm about to drop a bomb on you. You're gonna love this. <laughs> Nailed it. That could be like their catchphrase. <laughs> um, okay, so Joe, I do want to kind of keep picking your brain, but while we're on the call, um, is there anything that we can help you with? Because we kind of all have different experiences from you. I think. So as you're getting this business off the ground, is there perhaps like any areas you're feeling a bit stuck with or or need any help or advice with? And we can try and do your best and help the listeners through that. Yeah, um, I think for me, like what's what's really interesting for me is that you're all now quite you're very high profile designers, like in all your respective fields. And it's kind of, no, it's just, it's true. Really? Like it's kind of, you know, I, I was like, oh my God, I get to talk to these guys. It's amazing. It's like, Ian but, couldn't even let her get through that sentence. <laughs> <laughs> D- Dustin, you're just going to play that back to yourself. That could be the quote for like the 
Dustin, are you going to play that back to your wife like next time she asks you to do the chore? I won't be playing that to anyone. Anytime someone starts just like arguing with me, I'll just be like, <laughs> it'd be oh, like Will Farrell, you know, Anchorman. Hey guys, look how good I am. Look at <laughs> oh my goodness. That, that was leading okay. to a question before we derailed that. After you, um, so, so what's the question? Oh yeah, it's like since you're so also awesome, can you like tell me kind of how um how it was for you guys actually starting out, putting yourself out there a bit more, like kind of actually really specialising in your specific field and sort of saying, you know, hey, this is what I do, and you know, I'm actually pretty good at it, and this is why you should be, you know, noticing me and, and you know buying stuff from me and paying attention. Mm-hmm. Do you do you mind if I direct this to Lisa to kick it off? Because we yeah. had requests, we want more female voices on the show. <laughs> so you, you guys just talk amongst <laughs> yourselves, right? Um, well, for me, it's it, to be honest, I I thought it was crappy, completely crappy in the beginning. I mean, I was I thought it was terrible, and um, I still think. I mean, obviously, every you you always grow, and there's always room for improvement, um, forever and ever and ever, and I can honestly say from month to month, I can see an improvement in my own skills. So I can't really say it's like, it's, it's, as you said, it's like organic. Um, It's more about like two years ago, you look back and you go, wow, look how far I've come. Um, But generally it, it was very scary, very scary. I mean, I'm sure you were scared when you started your thing and started, you know, putting your stuff out there and, and for me, it was it was incredibly frightening. I mean, I thought people were going to hate my stuff and you know laugh me off the internet. I don't know. I, and <laughs> and I still I still have um, insecurities. And I still have you know all the things that that you mentioned. You know that you struggle with. Um, but the, the what what I can say is that that's made a big difference in my journey. And I know this is a real cliche, but it's it's so it's a cliche for a reason because it's true. If you if you just keep doing it, literally dedicate some time a day for either building your craft or improving on your confidence in your work and, and do whatever it is that, that, that'll help you get there, um, it just gets better and better and easier and easier for you to believe in what you do. And um, if you, yeah, I guess if you keep putting your stuff out there and, you know, maybe people hate it, maybe they don't, but just that consistency and um you know, dedicating, almost making a promise to yourself that you keep. Um, and yeah, just do that every day. It just gets easier. That's what I found. Uh, but I still have all those insecurities you mentioned. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it ever goes away. You sort know. of learn to manage it a bit better. Kind of just accept that's yeah. kind of how it is. But but you keep going anyway. <laughs> yeah. Can, can I exactly. use a helpful analogy? Yeah. Do, I don't I don't know if anyone remembers, uh, there was a ski jumper called uh, Eddie the Eagle Wed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he uh, lives around here i've seen him in the streets <laughs> oh no way that's amazing i was just thinking how he was terrible he was like really really terrible <laughs> but he's made a name for himself for being so terrible and i just think you know even if you're not gonna what you do you can there's still gonna be people who enjoy who you are even if you know even if you find difficult to get to a certain level there's you know there's not a time where I've, where people have hated like with all the work I've been doing, there's going to be a group of people who hate it and there's going to be a group of people who like it. And I think that happens with all type of work. That is no, you're never going to please everyone. So you don't mm-hmm. have to, you know, just, just know that that's there. You know, all of us have done stuff that not everyone likes. And so having that, going, okay, you know, realising that, but just know that there is going to be a group of people who like it really helps you to sort of think, oh, okay, oh, you know, I can keep pushing myself out there and putting um you know, this is me this is what i do um and uh yeah you'll you know gain work and you'll gain um an audience so if that makes sense yeah <laughs> <laughs> how, how about you dustin i think the thing i just occurred to me the other day was uh, so i've been learning glyphs lately and mm-hmm. as i've learned it i've been looking up a lot of tutorials online and the ones that aren't good, I flip past and I never remember the name of the person. I forget who they were. I don't even remember the article two days later. The epic, most amazing glyphs article that I've read, I scan through it and I'm done with it in seven minutes. It probably took the person a week to write it. 
I think that just made me realize no matter what we do, people are mostly focused on just getting what they need. And we're not, I guess, something that they sit around thinking this person is really, really sucks. Or this person is really great. For the most part, they're just thinking about about themselves. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but it's kind of empowering to realize someone is not. You're not as important as you thought you were. <laughs> exactly. Someone's not sitting not someone's not sitting around despising you. Arrogant designers. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is true. It is true. Uh, you know, you think the world is coming to an end because you you put up some crappy looking bunny on Instagram, but actually really it's fine. <laughs> yeah, and just think yeah. about your own habits of going through and consuming media and how quickly you do it and how quickly you forget about things and mm. you realize yeah, I think it's kind of almost to make yourself feel more important because I always remember, like I used to end like client emails or you know I'm going to be away for the weekend, but if there's anything urgent, let me know. But I think is that ever like a design emergency? It's not really. <laughs> it's any it's situation like, where, where, it's like where an they're in. It's, like, it's, just, it's just to make yourself feel a little bit like oh I'm, I could be really needed. <laughs> yeah. There's like medical emergencies, but like I would love to see a true design emergency. You didn't, Other than you didn't the cross logo. the T on our logo. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's all gone to hell maybe, <laughs> maybe going back to my builder friend not that oh, no. oh, oh, oh yeah I do, I do. I so, so Joe, uh, Joe just for awareness this is Ian's favourite guy in the world he comes up at least like once every couple of episodes he's always the example given no matter what the topic who? <laughs> Ian's J- builder just friend. the builder he's a generic builder Bob you know. oh, yes. okay. yeah. Bob the builder <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh imagine if um you know when you go into a site entrance to uh a building work there's always a sign that says you know you have to wear hats and steel toe cap boots imagine if there was that for design you know you can't come in unless you're not using comic sans <laughs> or you're, <laughs> you're I like that. you know you're always using helvetica uh you know there's like a a safety thing it's gonna measure the kerning to, on this yeah <laughs> you have to adhere to this you know can you actually be... design that ian uh, design it for your new studio you're building for the bottom of your garden yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, have a little safety sign <laughs> yeah it's brilliant see, yeah. see i've got to get i've got to get my builder friend around to do that <laughs> so maybe maybe we get him on the show <laughs> <laughs> um okay joe so in terms of where your business is at now, um, is there anything else like could be more technical, could be more business focused, could be design focused, like anything? What would help get you to the next level, do you think? Or is there anything else that, you know, is like a burning thing which you, you need help with? I think I'm going to say like sort of the time management and the motivation. Cause I think especially when I find that because I work from home on my own a lot, it's, it is just very easy to drift. And I think I've just come to learn that I have no concept of time. <laughs> it's kind of, it's just like the fun about how you kind of really instill that sense of, right, I've got to, I've got to get this done. And actually, you know, really, really getting started and actually, you know, f- finishing your work. So I guess. Have, have you always been like that or? I'm, I'm afraid to say I, I have. I have, yes. Okay. So it's kind of. Um... <laughs> Yeah, then it is a bit, a bit difficult. I I don't know. I would say that do you have like a um a social routine? Like do you I don't know, go to a class on a Wednesday and a this on a Friday and a so nothing like that because that's actually a good start if you did do something like like a social thing that you that you stuck to because that um for me I find if if I know I have somewhere to go say, you know, at 3 I've got to ha- you know, I'm getting ready to go at 3 I, I get a whole lot of stuff done before I go because you know you're leaving the house by that time so I find that my 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 social routine actually helps from that point of view I don't know if maybe you can come up yeah, with something like that <laughs> now, the flexibility is kind of like a blessing and a curse so I do try and it kind is. Of like look for, for more social things to do but what I find inevitably happens is that I kind of sort of sort of faff around for like half the day and think right I've got to do work so I'm going to not do the social thing I was going to do and do the work instead and then I kind of end up sort of faffing around Doing a little nothing. bit longer. Yeah, and this kind yeah. of, which makes me sound yeah. really bad, actually, but it's kind of, this is what I'm trying, <laughs> to, trying to overcome. It's like... <laughs> no, it's good. Like, we're all human with this and we all suffer from it. And I know I always did historically. Um, my advice would be, I know you're really passionate about what you do. So clearly it's not like, it's not like you need to get more passionate about it and that's going to be your driver. 
I would find a way to try and tie results to motivation. So to clarify what I mean, you're looking at getting into selling digital products through us. You're looking um, at getting into selling physical prints and stuff that you can ship to people all over the place. And I think they are things that are perhaps um, a little bit more scalable and a little bit uh, more results driven. Whereas client work, it can kind of feel like you're floating all over the place, I think. So you're kind of jumping between like working on this project and, you know, doing this business card and and it can feel a bit floaty. Whereas um, say you're selling like uh, prints on Etsy or something like that, and you know that every time you release a new print, you get an influx of money that becomes mentally like a, a trigger for you because you're like, well, every time I do that, more money comes in my account. Yeah, like a pack and of stock it, kind of and thing. So, yeah. yeah, exactly. And so for me, it's never really been a money thing, but it's a success thing. So I kind of had a similar thing with design cards where it was like the harder I worked, the faster it took off. And I was the worst person for like procrastinating and stuff like that before uh, design cards but that was the biggest motivator for me to the extent where basically I did nothing else so it was like no Netflix no social life like all I did was work because like when it's clearly tied to results there's no more like floating around with the client stuff it's like I've, I need to get that product out I need to get that next print out because every time I do that my business gets bigger and bigger do, do you find that you tend to procrastinate on the jobs that you actually in in your mind know that you would enjoy the most but yeah okay because the reason why i'm asking that because i find that with myself um when i have an illustration task or job or whatever that i want to get to that i know I've, I've been quite excited about for the last two days i've been thinking oh, i just need time to sit down and do it and then when i actually do get time to do it i do everything but do it um i think it's because w- we, we might be disappointed in the results or we put too much pressure on ourselves or we, we, you know, we have to sit down and face those demons that we always talk about, you know, I'm not good enough. I'm like that. So you tend to um, do everything to avoid feeling those feelings kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so it, what I actually do to get around that is literally, well, I know this sounds simple, but it's not, um, but I, I literally ignore them because that's what's holding you back. Um, you just have to, <laughs> sounds like I'm in an AA meeting. You have to acknowledge the fact <laughs> that that you have. How would you know what an AA meeting is like? <laughs> <laughs> you have to admit you have a problem first. Yeah, <laughs> that that is a particularly large glass of wine that you've got there, Lisa. <laughs> oh, true. <laughs> this is not going well. well. Um, you actually have to. I, I understand, Lisa. I know where you're coming oh, from, thank Lisa. You. It's all yeah. right. <laughs> it's like... Yeah, <laughs> because it's that that's really making you, giving you, um, you know, the reasons to not get down and do it. It's uncomfortable a lot of the time. I mean, I know obviously we sometimes we're just lazy, but yeah, sometimes because you're trying to avoid being uncomfortable. So yeah, just yeah. think of that maybe next time. It's interesting to hear that. I hope for the listeners that it isn't that you're stuck with how do I draw better or how do I create a better product or even how do I kind of market myself or deal with clients. A lot of this just comes back to mindset and focus, productivity. Yeah. And I think that probably plays out for a lot of the listenership because it's it's so prevalent like we kind of all know how to do our job and yeah. we know that the more we do it the better we get like that's that's kind of a no-brainer hmm. but this seems to be the hard stuff i heard this yeah. great piece of advice from the famous producer rick rubin who did chili peppers and beastie boys and he said when he's working with artists that if they're having a block or having trouble moving forward with something creative he gives them the smallest task possible. So he might say, just go home and write one great word or one great line to the song. But literally I've heard from some books I've read that he'll ask, just write one word. And typically they'll come back with a whole verse or a whole two verses. Hmm. But by making it such a small task, it just sounds so bite-sized. It's like mm-hmm. no, po- no option to fail, basically. Yeah, yeah, and it just like makes it feel easy and it's more approachable. Less pressure. Less overwhelming. Yeah. Do you find it, Joe, where you see your to do list and it feels impossible and overwhelming? And it's only when you finally get round to it, you're like, actually that really wasn't that bad at all. And you kind of crack through it. Yeah. And, I, and at that point it's like, why didn't I start this sooner? It's actually a lot <laughs> lot easier than I thought. But it's yeah. It is it's, it's like you know, like Dustin was just saying, it was it's usually just getting started that's the hardest bit. 
and it is you kind of just have to almost give yourself one tiny thing you can do that you can't fail at essentially and mm. it's um and that from there you've got the at least the ball is rolling and you've got the momentum and for me it's literally it's just the starting because you kind of will if I start and then it's rubbish. I'd rather just not mm. start and kind of confront the fact exactly. that it might not be good. You know? Yeah. No, it is. <laughs> so in terms of accountability, I've got a question for you. Okay. You, you, you don't have to lay this out there uh, and you might not even know the answer, but have you got a game plan for where you want to take what you're doing? Because it's early days right now. Have you got like, here's where I'd love it to be in five years time kind of thing? I have a kind of a loose game plan in that I was kind of thinking in terms of actually the difference between, because I heard this phrase then, I thought it was quite interesting, was owning a business and owning a job. Because mm-hmm. at the moment, I actually, I technically own a job because everything I do comes, it has to be done by me. Whereas if you own a business, that's almost like a separate entity and it can run itself. So what I thought would be quite interesting is if I could ever get to, I could get to a stage where almost like the Cotswold chalkboard becomes like an academy of like kind of trained sign writers or people who wow. like were like actually this is the kind of thing I would love to do and you could set up like almost like a school where you know well here's how you do it and you know you have branches and there'll be like various sort of chalkboard artists and sign writers in various areas that could essentially kind of almost work as themselves but they've had that kind of that background where they've learned how to do things and try things out and kind of have it almost as a springboard love and that. I and I would kind of, Sounds I sort of run that from my big CEO chair to win the background whilst I'm kind of doing <laughs> kind of all the arty stuff that I want to do. But it, again, it, it kind of stems actually wanting to, to sort of help people and inspire people and kind of give give people like an opportunity to kind of get into where they want to, to do things, but they don't necessarily know how to start. And hopefully what I'm doing is I'm now learning myself how, how that's done and then maybe implement it in the future to actually help more people. So that's why it's mm-hmm. kind of this, this sort of digital foot's quite exciting because it's kind of almost like a tiny step towards that because it's actually allowing a few more people to kind of you know, play around and try things out and sort of see if this sort of style of design actually works for them mm-hmm. if that makes that's, sense that's amazing uh it's big I, I thought you might turn around and say yeah i'd like to have twice the amount of clients <laughs> or something i'm, actually, I'm, looking, for, I'm <laughs> looking for world domination tom like all of it uh, <laughs> it, it, it like... sounds like it yeah. <laughs> they're not messing it's around it's a freaking cool idea <laughs> Taking you, the world one chalkboard at a time. <laughs> yeah. That that sounds absolutely amazing. Um, I guess my only advice would be make sure that it's definitely what you want to do and it's not just an attractive idea. Yeah. Because, make, you know, you would essentially be much more in business mode and mentoring mode than you would spending all day drawing mode. Yeah. Which, you know, can be great. But, yeah, that's that's a very cool dream, though. I like it. Thank you. <laughs> can I say that my goals change weekly? Yeah, it's that as well. It's like, uh, oh, I get set on an idea and then I like, rah, no, it's, it's going to bore me. Let's change something else. <laughs> I, I don't know why, but I can pitch you as a builder for some reason. Yeah. Just something in my subconscious. That's what I love about you, Ian, is that I'm always wondering what's he going to do next because <laughs> oh, so am I. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, like everything is kind of so organic. You know, you kind of do have these ideas but then something will happen and it's kind of almost okay if suddenly think actually no this is this is completely changed and I want to do this like I never yeah. even like just within the last even a year ago I didn't even think I'd never thought I'm going to be specialised in doing chalkboard signage because um, I was focusing a lot more on the, the graphic side of things so you don't really know where things will take you mm. I love that though because that's what we keep preaching on this show like you're so good at actually doing I think so many creatives just get really self-conscious and it's like, oh, I couldn't possibly even share my work on Instagram and they don't even get that first step out of the way. It's like, you've done that. You've gone and set up a business. You've done all the work behind that. You've drummed up clients. You've started growing it. You've got into vlogging, which you'd never done before. Thank you. You're now getting into digital products and I'm sure that's going to go amazingly. You're getting yourself out there on podcasts right now. Like, you know, there's going to there's gonna be 10,000 people or so listening to this, which is kind of crazy um just <laughs> sorry just love that pressure on um and they will go look at your work by the way <laughs> yeah they yeah so, date the website there <laughs> <laughs> so um all of that comes from taking action instead of just sitting there and be like oh well what if exactly. no one likes it or, yeah. or doesn't like me or whatever i think i just kind of get bored really easily and i and it's, it's kind of a good thing and a bad thing as well that like you just want to try 
everything. I just want to do mm. all the cool, exciting things and I want to do them now. And that can be exciting in terms of you do do them or you end up not doing anything because you, ca- you can't actually do everything at the same time. So you just do nothing instead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The interesting thing about it is I think a lot, a lot more people can do all the things that they see people that they see that are more high profile that they enjoy watching do. It's just that so few people are willing to put themselves out there and do it. So we enjoy watching them. It's not that they're particularly better than everybody. It's just that they Mm-mm. go out there and do it. And yeah. possibly endure the humiliation or scariness <laughs> of it. I, mean, I don't have an issue with making a fool of myself or anything like that. But it's kind of, with, with starting with the videos particularly as well, it's like, you know, by the end of sort of, by the time I've got everything edited and sent off, I'm like sick of the sight and sound of myself. But <laughs> whenever I see any, anything else online, it kind of, and even like listening to this podcast as well, just actually hearing that not everyone is perfect and you kind of struggle a bit is it's reassuring and so kind of a part of me thinks well I don't think anyone's particularly watching thinking that Joanna Fallon is the, the aspiration that I want to be but it's kind of like it's sort of just showing that you know I, I have insecurities I have struggles and it's just nice mm. to actually see you know like I said not, not having that total sheen of um of what you see online is actually times when you're like actually nothing really happened this week or this week you know I've not you know, I, I kind of forgot to set up my camera. <laughs> it's kind of, it's just, um, it's the reality. And, you know, you kind of, if you're on Instagram, you kind of see all these beautiful images and hashtags kind of like entrepreneur life and it's all thumbs up and how, how wonderfully <laughs> I'm doing. But, you know, entrepreneur life also, I've got to, I've got a pile of ironing to do around some of the client <laughs> stuff. <laughs> like, I mean, I've got, I've, I've got to either be dressed this week or I've got, to, I've got a deadline. It's kind of, you know, it's, it's a reality yeah. of that. And if hopefully if I kind of people, people see that that's kind of a, a good thing because i know when i see that myself it's kind of a bit like i feel a bit more human again and it's okay of course me too i mm. love seeing that when you see just people messing up or just like you're like oh there's part of me my chaoticness or disorganization mm-hmm. i love it I, i've got another, another analogy <laughs> <of> like, <laughs> is, it, is it bob <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's not Bob this time. Bob's back. I was just thinking, uh, what we the... should get him on the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yesterday, yesterday. Um, <laughs> that I suppose my journey can be summed up in this analogy: is that you know when you're walking along the street and you accidentally trip over, like there's like um, a bit of the pavement that's raised, and you trip over, and you try and turn it into a run. So you try and make it look cool. <laughs> So I just like that sort of sums up my career because like I haven't planned any of this. Seems to work out quite well though. Yeah, yeah. I kept on going forward, but I'd suddenly trip on something and just fall into something cool. You know, like (laughs) last week I wasn't here because I was in Iceland doing some lettering, and I was like, well, you know that that wasn't something I sort of set out at the beginning. Think I'm going to go to Iceland and draw on some sand <laughs> but like but your work is also amazing like kind of from actually seeing your talk as well in Birmingham like your presentation was amazing because it was just so inspirational and so real but you kind of look at I sort of look at your career and think you've done all this really cool amazing stuff but then watch, watching your presentation the seeing the way it came about was just kind of so interesting because it was so organic like you said you, you know you started doing some Instagram posts where you were writing with a carrot and then everyone started kind of ta- just tagging their friends like with the word carrot, and then you're like on the BBC. <laughs> it's like kind of, you can't really plan for that. It just sort of no, it just exactly what about. I'm saying. It's just like it sort of tripped over, and I went, oh, it fell into it. <laughs> I feel like that metaphor, like we could just be like call it a wrap and not do any more episodes. <laughs> like that metaphor is probably just about how everything goes. What the carrot? We have the, the meaning of falling. we have the meaning of life. Tripping right on yes. the sidewalk <laughs> and pretending like you meant to run. Like I feel like that's there. You go. There's a title knows. of a talk there as well. You know, <laughs> tripping into success. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. There's some people who can walk along the street because I'm quite clumsy. Actually, and and my kids have got my clumsiness as well. You know, some people can just walk along the street. They look cool. They never trip up, and they get to where they want to go. You know, and there's some people who do that. They plan out what they want to do. They get there and they do it in a really cool way. I walk along the street and I trip over nothing. Sometimes I just trip over and it's flat. That's what I was going to say. Like, I trip over my own feet, then I turn around and like look to try to figure out what it was, but like really I know it was just my own foot. Okay, <laughs> I was trying to do a Casey Neistat at the airport in Atlanta. I was going along on the skateboard and I fell off in front of a whole plane full of people queuing up to get on. And uh, I fell off and I rolled and stuff went everywhere. 
I like literally, you know, did head over heels. And uh, this old couple brought my skateboard back to they go, you didn't really want to do that, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I sort of took the skateboard and walked off just like my, you know, tail between my legs. <laughs> what was even worse was that they were English. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, come get some hot chocolate and a cookie with us, buddy. <laughs> It's so much worse the fact that you're a fairly young bloke and they're like a couple of elderly pensioners, yeah. yet they're the ones helping you up. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Jumping on the analogy train here is like kind of you can't you can't drive a you can't steer a parked car, so you've just got to, even though you're not entirely sure where you're going, at least if you kind of start moving, you'll kind of head somewhere. And exactly. I- I think with those analogies, it's all about the fact that you actually have to be moving. Cause like, yeah, you can't yeah. I mean, like, in, in my life, I don't, I don't fall over too much, thankfully, but I do kind of get lost quite a lot. So I kind of like, take like, various, several <laughs> different detours and then kind of sort of eventually end up on the right path again. But that's kind of... that's kind The of thing is, if you don't move, yeah. you're not... Like, for me, I wouldn't have never tripped into any of these things if I hadn't been moving forward and pers- just constantly doing. And I suppose that's the same for Joe. It's just constantly doing... And like for her, she may take a detour and find something that like with the chalkboard is something that she's really passionate about and can really boost her company. And I suppose, but it's that exploration and constantly going forward that you just need to do. Mm. I think that's what makes it so hard because every day, even though you're doing something every day, you it's, it's not easy to measure your success, really. Um, and it only takes, you know, like a few years go by and then you can actually look back and go oh wow look how far I've come so I think people forget about that they get caught up and they want success immediately but I think if you just do it every single day you're just moving forward as you said you know before you know it you actually man you're going places you know yeah well absolutely and kind of sort Mm. of when I started up this sort of business I kind of thought I put my portfolio together again you kind of come across work you did sort of years ago that you've completely forgotten about and you look at thinking actually that that was all right you know and yeah think, actually that, that was rubbish but but look at my stuff what I'm doing now it's much better so you kind of exactly <laughs> yeah to be honest I think that's something probably every creative has hopefully felt at some point and yeah it definitely shows progression in your work I think so while we're kind of circling around a few things here um is there any closing words of advice or wisdom uh which you would like to impart for the listeners joe oh that's a lot of pressure (laughs) um i think just just start stuff and it's usually never as bad as it is in your own head like as we covered like you're actually not as important as you think you are yourself it's kind of you do stuff people notice things will happen and then it'll just kind of grow naturally and you will react to it in the right in the right way I've, I've only I've always found that the moments where I'm kind of panicking about whether I think it's good enough something's good enough or whether people are going to like what I do I, I end up just doing nothing whereas if I just start and kind of almost sort of think you sort of you know don't worry too much about it and just do it good good things do happen so yeah just just give it a go and then you know can then sort of roll with it from there really is, is that is that sagely enough that's great <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yes, yeah, definitely uh, good closing thoughts, I think, very wise. So, Joe, for everyone listening at home, where can they find you online if they want to see more of your work? I think is it the cotswoldchalkboard.com? Yeah, oh, I've still got to link up like about 10 variations on that domain name. <laughs> I kind of realised afterwards. It's uh, the cotswoldchalkboard.co.uk or Joanna Fallon. I'll probably appear somewhere on social media where you'll find all the relevant links. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thank you so much from all of us for coming on the show, Joe. Thank Absolute you. pleasure having you on. And hopefully we'll have you on again in the future. Thanks, Joe. Good talking. Great to meet you. Ciao. Goodbye. Thank you for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. <laughs>
Thanks again for tuning in and we'll see you next week right here on The Honest Designer Show.